the hip hop police, that job has now been given to machines. And those machines are Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, 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 and Instagram. These are the hip hop police of 2019. They collect all the evidence, do all the surveillance, and damn near make arrests. They even prosecute their own cases. When, when a prosecutor goes into the courtroom, all they have to do is pull up Facebook and it tells the story itself. It's like, you have to, all you would have to do, if, if, if all you do all day long is try to find out how to catch criminals, how hard would it be to say, you know what, let's just, you know what I'm saying? Let's just allow them to tell on themselves. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Let's put out, let's put out a disclaimer. Let's put out a, a, a disclaimer right fast. I don't approve of anyone being in the streets at this point in time because it's not safe. It's the same thing, the same way I feel about the three S's. I don't approve of niggas getting in relationships, even fucking bitches at this moment right now because it's not safe. They have too much power. Speaking of that, if you have not went to change.org and signed a men to petition, I don't know what the fuck you got going on. Get your shit together, big home. Get in the description box. I got a hot link right there for you. Go to chain.org. Sign a fucking petition. Let's make something happen. But I don't approve of anyone being in the street doing any street shit. But as street niggas, we've always had this issue of watching too many movies. And really, and, and we already own drugs and shit like that. So we really think that that's real life. You think that you coming in court talking about some, we don't be in, we don't break, it's Treyway. As you walk out of courtroom, you think that's going to make 6 9 come up out of his police officer mind and say, you know what, we did have some good times together. He rode with me when no one else would. This is really my friend. All that time he was around you and shit like that, he was getting evidence. He wasn't having fun with you and shit like that, even though undercover officers, a lot of times, they do actually have real fun going to the strip club, doing all the shit that they do. Because it's fun to be around street niggas. Because you can just, it's lawless. Do whatever you want. Everyone wants to live like that. That's why a lot of times, undercover officers can, what do they call that shit when an undercover officer, like, loses it and actually goes rogue. Like, they go rogue. Like, they're really in the streets. But in real life, and that's, once again, that's movie shit. In real life, that officer has paperwork he got to fill out. He puts his handcuffs on, on, in his back pocket, right there by his taser, his gun, and his badge. He got a job to do. It was never Trey Wade. The fuck do you mean, like, we don't be and we don't break? All that time you had together, he was collecting evidence. It was never Trey Wade. And this is what the fuck we have that issue, thinking that you saying we don't be and we don't break is Trey Wade. You think that's going to trigger something in his mind where now he's like, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing and just lose all the paperwork and just throw away this whole fucking operation we've been running for two years. No, dog. No. Stop watching the movies. It's not real life. Hey, I appreciate all the support I'm getting and shit like that, but I truly hate confusion. So I'm going to kill it right here. February 15th, 6 p.m. Standard Central Time. I will be going live again, but not going live, but not just on IG. I'm going live on YouTube also. If you want to go on a live with me, be on the screen with me, like y'all been asking, it's going to be a $50 charge, and I'll have 10 slots. The order in which you get your slot is the order in which you'll come on the screen. Shut the fuck up! I expect for everybody who... Come on the screen to have the Are You Serious or Big Facts t-shirt on, representing AO Nation. 
Um, if you haven't got your shirts yet and shit like that, you already understand what's going on. All the shirts, except for the Men 2 movement, this is the Men 2 um, t-shirt. All the shirts are going for 15. All headwear is going for 10. Uh, if you want to be part of the Men 2 movement, this is the shirt that we're going to be wearing. You know what I'm saying? When we do our thing, whatever like that, these are going for 20 and shit. Also, also, at 5 o'clock on February 15th, I'm going to give out the number to this phone. You're going to be able to call in during the live. Like, and we're going to talk and shit like that. So we're going to have folks on the screen going live and folks calling in. It's going to be crazy. Obviously, the number's free and all that shit like that. From 5 o'clock to 5.50, the number will be on Instagram. At 5.50, I'll take it down. At 6.05 will be the first call I take. We running. Let's do it. And that's, that's really what I want to talk about. Like, welcome back to the Rap Trap. I am A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation and the Men 2 Movement. Go to the description box. And this is in hindsight. This episode of The Rap Trap, we're talking about the rap industry being the trap. Coming into this industry is the trap in itself. Um, let's, let's look at Takashi as a piece of cheese and the members of Treyway like rats. And the operation, or oh, fuck it, the music industry will be the trap. So, in order to get to Takashi, Shadi and all the Treyway members had to come into the rap industry. As soon as they came into the rap industry to get Takashi, they were trapped. They would have to do certain shit, be certain places, even if it was entrapment, even if uh, the charge that put all these niggas under was entrapment because Takashi paid the motherfuckers to do some shit. Even if that was the fucking case. We know that the government plays fucking dirty. We know it. They play dirty. Uh, it's certain shit you can do if, if you don't do this. Or uh, disinvolve any fucking knowledge of your operation and shit like that. Like, it's so many things that they can do. Looking at this bullshit, it just looks like another CIA operation. COINTELPRO How did they stop the civil rights movement? The government, the CIA Has said that they have infiltrated Every major fucking group um, Whether it be the Ku Klux Klan Or the fucking Hells Angel They've infiltrated every one of them In this country and abroad How in the fuck You know what I'm saying? There is no How long have they wanted The trade Like what the fuck? What are we doing here? You get into this rap shit and you start doing, let's do this. You get into the rap shit. When you was in the street just, just hustling, grinding, you was broke, just barely making it and shit like that, but you were under the radar. Their way of putting you in the fucking spotlight and getting that evidence that they want to get you to fuck off the street is to put you in a place where you can't hide this shit. If you hide it, you're not going to pop. The trap is already set. Um, right now what they have is um trucks. They're trying out trucks and cars, but mainly trucks because it's a job. Warehouse jobs that no longer need humans to whatever the fuck they gotta do. They don't, you don't need an actual driver to drive this truck. It drives itself. Hip hop police used to be you needed real officers in order to do that job. And they were mysterious. You know what I'm saying? You didn't know who they were and all that shit like this. The hip-hop police, that job has now been given to machines. And those machines are Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, 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 and Instagram. These are the hip-hop police of 2019. They collect all the evidence, do all the surveillance, and damn near make arrests. They even prosecute their own cases. When, when a prosecutor goes into the courtroom, all they have to do is pull up Facebook and it tells the story itself. It's like, you have to, all you have to do, if, if, if all you do all day long is try to find out how to catch criminals, how hard would it be to say, you know what, let's just, you know what I'm saying? Let's just, Allow them to tell on themselves. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? How hard would it be to put somebody over here, okay, they need protection? You no, know, like, it, I don't think it will be that fucking hard. And to see how this shit goes down, how Danny, Jesse, whatever the fuck this Mexican's name is, he's going home. Everybody else is going to jail. How is this not a trap? Billy Otto, Alshon Martin looked like the people that were on the outskirts. Billy Otto was the first one to get kicked out. Actually, the scum gang niggas was the first niggas to get kicked out. Then Billy Otto. Alshon Martin was always just on the outskirts and shit like that. But just like a movie, or fuck the, the movie, just like in the streets, if a nigga turn, if he... You know, if he know he working and shit like that, the people that he actually fuck with, he gonna tell them to stay the fuck away from him. You know what I'm saying? And that should tip a real street nigga off. Like, hold on. That was his people. He ain't fucking with them no more. Like, what's going on right there? But if you working for the law, the people you fuck with, you ain't trying to fuck them over. You gonna do what Alpo did and fuck over the niggas from out of town and shit like that. So what does this show you? Obviously, he must have fucked with the scum gang niggas. He must have fucked with Billy Otto. I don't think that this nigga just started working. I just don't feel it. I don't feel like he just started working. I feel like it's been an operation for a while. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, it was a certain point when something happened. I just don't know that much about his career and shit like that to know when it actually happened. But I think he been turned. And, you know, me being into, like, conspiracies and shit like that, like, it just, I feel like it's more to it. But it goes right into this rap trap shit. Like, as soon as you come into this rap game, everything that you did in the street, you don't get to stop doing that shit. You have to show it not. You have to show it in the rap shit more than you did on the street. Cause it, it this the, the whole idea of being a street nigga, it doesn't work. It's a broken system. To be a real street nigga, it's a broken fucking system. Because the only place that you actually gonna get. The, the rewards and the benefits of being a real street nigga is the place that you reside. You don't get to go to Atlanta. If you're from Alabama, you don't get to go to Atlanta and get treated like that unless you've already been put on the books, which is with, like, Big Meech. Fucking uh, Frank Lucas, any notorious gangster. Like, you don't even get, like, the, the big rewards until after you took your fucking ball. You got to get arrested to even get in the law. Because before that, you got to stay under the radar. So it's, just, it's a broken system. So as you're trying to be the real street nigga right here, and now you get into the music shit, you can't show them folks that you're a real street nigga without having a chopper. And, and nigga, if you're a real street nigga, what it does that? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was, I'm telling you, I was a real street nigga. I was doing the street shit, but now I'm doing this music shit. I'm not actively trying to be a street nigga no more. I'm trying to be... This now, that shit right there, obviously wasn't what it was. I'm trying out this rap shit now. When it was time to do street shit, I did street shit, but this ain't the place to do no street shit. This is the rap game. But now the rap game has, has turned into a gladiator arena, arena where you have to do the fucking most. Like, if you don't have, as I, I'm trying to show you on this video, if you don't have money, guns and dope in the video then you not about that you ain't you ain't on that you know what i'm saying like you not they ain't you for real like that you know what i'm saying like if you're a real street nigga you you should have access to all kind of pistols dracos everything if you don't got none in your video like you just you know what I'm you just talking but as we just seen these niggas in jacksonville that's dissing uh young and ace like, 12 niggas in the video, eight of them niggas got real deal fucking charges. The fucking police department made an operation called Wrap Up. Said, uh, we we believe those guns to be real. They believe them to be real. They don't even know if they're real or not. We believe them to be real. Uh, and at least three of them are convicted felons and shouldn't be around weapons. So they put charges on them motherfuckers from the fucking video. Talk to the videographer like... What a gun's real, like, no, nah, we think they fake and shit like that. Fuck that. These niggas is really on the run from a fucking music video, and it's not the first time this has happened. Everyone is watching the game. We know that putting anything on social media, they can use this shit in court. 
but you have to do it once you come in this rap shit, because if you don't, you're not going to skyrocket. Your numbers ain't going to do what they need to do, because nobody believe you. We need to see you buying this kind of jewelry. We need to see you posting up your street, letting niggas know you, they can come get it anytime. If you're not acting like that, then you're not really that. That's how people gauge who's really about that shit and who's not. Because no one can tell through the camera lens who's who. You need to make sure. So a nigga got to kill a nigga on camera. And we just have this right now, because we're in a talentless age, people are settling for infamy over fame. A famous person is, you know, Bruno Mars and, you know, Lady Gaga, Usher, and shit like that. A infamous person is Welvin the Great, um, Wide Nick, uh, Long Nick, Daddy Long, uh, you no, know, see these motherfuckers. You're just, uh, or the motherfucker who shot a nigga on camera. You're infamous for being the bitch who, um, got fucked on camera. You know what I'm saying? It's a difference, but I guess because it, they kind of have similar... Perks, you know what I'm saying? I guess motherfuckers can't tell the difference because everybody know you when you go out and shit like that, but what do they know you for? And my issue is an infamous motherfucker can come right into this rap shit and skyrocket. This little bitch, um, uh, Danielle Bergoli, the Catch Me Outside girl, what fucking talent did she have? She was infamous for being a trailer trash bitch on, on the Mora show. We welcome them with open arms because that's what we relate with. Not we, but you nothing ass hoes relate with that shit. Oh yeah, I. So we accept them and they win. My issue is, here my issue. The only niggas, the only niggas that are truly asked to, to, to live up to the standard of being real street niggas and real gangsters and really holding them things and really having that money and really selling that dope is the African Americans. The Mexicans, Asian, Pacific Islanders, all them other motherfuckers, they can just say whatever the fuck they want to say. And they just go straight to the top. No kind of, nothing needed. No standard, no nothing. It's all love. But for a nigga, oh man, we got to really do that shit. If you ain't got no murder, attempted murder, assault battery, that ain't true. And you still got to show it. You still got to go to jail. Kodak Black, NBA young boy. You got to continue to go to Kevin Gates. You have to continue to get locked up and fucked up for niggas to even believe that you that. Not that they going to support you. Just to, for them be to believe what the fuck you're saying. You have to lay everything out and give up everything for this rap shit. But for everybody else, oh man, you can have a whole nother life. Like this motherfucker 6 9 when he comes home, it's all love because nobody thought he was there in the fucking first place. But he was still successful. This nigga took down a whole motherfucking African American uh, uh, organization. But I, I, I damn near believe that when he come home, y'all gonna fuck with him. Because this is what the rap game is. As long as you infamous for something, you can be a rapper. In every other fucking industry, you have to be talented. You have to have talent. You have to be able to do something. On this side, oh man, it's all love. Just whatever. You just come in the door. It's all good. Why you got niggas who've been working diligently trying to make something happen, working on these skills.